And we're live. That's what I'm being told. Sure, let's go with it. Hi, everyone. Hi. Oh, yes, it's confirmed. We're live. Uh, it's been six months. I still can't figure out how to use Zoom properly, uh, but none of us can. Uh, welcome. What are you watching right now? It's a great question. Uh, welcome to the Slam Dance uh, 2020 Screenplay Awards, Screenwriting Awards. Uh, it's very exciting. I know you are all excited to attend an awards ceremony at 11 o'clock in the morning on a Thursday, because that's really when they should all be held. Um, of course, it's 11 o'clock for me. We have people all over the world watching, all over the country watching. Even our panelists uh, are, are in all over the country, and it's very exciting. And we're going to have some fun today. We're going we're gonna to have a few speakers. We're going to have a panel to talk about writing, and then we're going to give out some awards. But who am I? Who are you asking? Who is this dude? It says on my Zoom who I am. But if you want to know the context, uh, uh, my name is Todd Berger. I am a longtime both slam dance alum. My first feature played slam dance back in 2010. Uh, and then I was invited back to become a programmer because the way slam dance works is once you have a film play there, they invite you to come back and program because it's a festival by filmmakers for filmmakers, unlike some other festivals uh, where they're programmed by in, in other ways that we won't discuss. Um, I'm also a member of the Writers Guild of America, which is a sponsor here of, of, the, uh, of the ceremony. I've been in the Writers Guild for 18 years. So I joined when I was seven years old. And right, I've, I've been a proud Writers Guild member. They've helped me out a lot. They've gotten my back because there are some sketchy people in this town who want to screw you at every opportunity. And the Writers Guild's always been there for me. And actually the movie that I made for Slam Dance was covered by the Writers Guild. So it's a perfect storm of why I'm here hosting this today. Uh, and I'm here, as you can see, in Hollywood, California. I'm outside of the Arclight Cinerama Dome. Uh, I've been here since quarantine started, waiting for Fast 9, uh, here in line, camping out. Um, I've been told it's been pushed to 2021, though. So anyway, um, so first up, <laughs> I'm going to bring on, uh, from Slam Dance, the man himself, the man, the myth, the legend, co-founder of Slam Dance, head of Slam Dance, I believe. I don't know what his title is. Uh, Peter Baxter. Here he is. Peter, Welcome. Thank you, Todd. Hey, everybody. And uh, thank you very much, everyone, for joining us uh, today. Uh, yeah, it's a little early, but of course, for some people in the world, it's, uh, it's also a little, little later. So, hey, you know, here, are the, here is the joy of, of Zoom. But I wanted to thank everyone for, for joining us today and everyone for um, competing in the 2020 Slam Dance Screenplay Competition. It's, uh, it was one huge competition this year. Over 6,000 entrants submitted their work. And um, it was an amazing, tough competition to judge. And uh, this is something that has really been uh, discussed you know, uh, at the end of the competition, how difficult it was to choose the winner. But we've got some very exciting finalists. Um, that we're going to be introducing later on in the show. And before we get there, I think one of the things that actually Todd was just mentioning about slam dance, you know, we all started basically because we got rejected. Uh, so we, were, we got rejected from this other festival down the road called Sundance. And we decided then not to disappear into the sunset, but to, to do something about it ourselves in establishing the Slam Dance Film Festival. And I, and I think here that, you know, for, for some listening in, uh, you, you may not win an award, um, but the, one of the few things that I know about the movie industry is that talent is one thing, but perseverance is another. Uh, of all the filmmakers that I've met and worked with in and around Slam Dance, I can tell you that each and every one, no matter how talented that they, that they, that they are, the perseverance that they've had to, um, to, to put into their work in becoming established has been the reason in the end why they have become successful. So for those that didn't win a prize this year, uh, please take part from that. And I really hope that the award ceremony with this discussion is going to be helpful to you. 
I hope that um, you will stay in touch with Slam Dance. And if there are other things you think that you can help us with, please reach out to us. We are, as Todd says, we're by filmmakers for filmmakers. And we would like you please to stay in touch with us. And uh, before I go back to Todd, I want to thank very much uh, the WGA for supporting our writers. I'd also like to thank all of the judges that have taken part in this competition. As you can imagine, there's so many screenplays that have been submitted to us. They put a lot of work into this competition, a lot of passionate work, and they're generally excited about the, uh, the finalists, a lot of the work that they've seen. And also new for this year, we're going to be um, introducing a mentorship award. And one of the reasons why we've done that is because sometimes it's been a little frustrating for, uh, for judges to see screenplays, which are just so nearly there, it's just so nearly ready to be produced, but with a little bit, of, a little bit more support, a little bit more um, nurturing development, it could be the winner, it could be a film that's made. So we're going to be uh, announcing for the first time our mentorship award later on. And um, Todd, thank you again for, for hosting the show and back to you. Thanks, Peter. It's kind of weird you didn't ask me to be a mentor in that mentorship program, but you know, whatever. Uh, actually he did, I was busy. Um, before I forget, at the end of the, the show, when we celebrate the winners, I will be opening this bottle of champagne that was sent to me by Slam Dance, uh, which has been chilling. It's actual champagne from France. So it's not sparkling wine or that Prosecco bullshit. So I advise you now to get on Drizzly and have some champagne or whatever delivered to you or coffee, soda, whatever your, your preference is. Uh, thank you, Peter. Uh, now we're gonna hear from, we've already heard, we've heard from Slam Dance. Let's hear from the WGA. We have here speaking on the behalf of the WGA West, not East, ugh, the Writers Guild West, Albert Munoz. Albert, welcome. Thank you. It's good to be here. Thank you, Welcome Peter to and Todd. Yeah. So um, on behalf of the Writers Guild of America West, I'd like to congratulate, congratulate everyone at Sand Sun Slam Dance, including Alina, Peter, and fellow community members for another successful year and the upcoming, film, film, the upcoming festival. Congratulations to all the semi-finalists and finalists on their successful submissions. We've had the pleasure of hosting the annual Slam Dance Award reception for the past few years now. And we're sad we're not able to do it on site at our headquarters on 3rd and Fairfax. Uh, of course, we look forward to the day when applicants will get a chance to check out the Guild firsthand. Uh, Slam Dance is a wonderful organization and artist led community that honors the spirit of independent filmmaking. And we're honored to participate in the ceremony. For anyone not familiar with the Writers Guild, we encourage you to check out the Guild on our website, wga.org. There you'll find resources and information available to all writers, such as how to register your script with the Guild. You could also learn more about WGAW benefits, like the contracts the Guild has negotiated on behalf of writers, including our low budget agreement. This agreement has numerous features that can help you become a member of the Guild. If you have any questions related to uh, the Guild, please reach out to me or my colleague, Kathy Genovese, who unfortunately couldn't make it this morning, but wishes everyone her best. Thank you, and I'm looking forward to spending the morning with y'all. All right, thanks, Albert. The Writers Guild building over there, Third and Fa Fairfax, great. It's a great theater. They don't let you bring snacks in though. And I've been petitioning that for years, because, but I understand why they do it. Um, so next up, I just want to talk about, uh, thank you to the partners for today. WGA West Pierce Law Group, also a sponsor today. Uh, another word of advice for you guys out there when making a film uh, for your first time, have a lawyer look it over, okay? Don't be an idiot. There's, as I said before, there are a lot of sketchy people out there. So Pierce Law Group is one of our sponsors today. Uh, Pierce Law Group LLP has served as a sponsor of Slam Dance for over 20 years, nearly from Slam Dance's very beginning. David Albert Pierce and Pierce Law Group specializes in representation of independent filmmakers in the area of film finance, production council services, distribution deals, and negotiations on behalf of creative individuals. Aside from the awards granted by Pierce Law Group to today's winners, all of today's finalists, along with all Slam Dance filmmakers and alumni, are entitled to a 20% discount on any legal services rendered by Pierce Law Group. 
Hey, that's pretty good. Slam Dance appreciates our longtime relation with the firm and their friendship to us demonstrates why Pierce Law Group LLP is the filmmakers deal makers. Seriously, don't sleep on getting a lawyer to look over your shit. Um, great. Okay, so now let's get to the, the fun, the meat and potatoes. Uh, I'm, we're gonna bring on a couple panelists and we're gonna have a, a fun, light conversation. And what is this panel? It's really, look, we all know you're writers. You know how to write a script. You know how to develop characters. Uh, that's why you're here, right? You submitted to the competition or you are a finalist or a semi-finalist. Today, we're here more to talk about like, what do you do now? Now that you are writing screenplays, what do you do? And uh, how do you deal with it? So let's bring on our panelists who are both former slam dance alumni, nusses, nye, a uh, festival screenplay competition. First up, we have Naima Ramos Chapman. Uh, sh uh, she works to tell stories of transformation and understated bravery by rending, rendering the juxtaposition of psycho-spiritual realities we cannot see alongside the normalized brutalities hiding in everyday life. Her first short, And Nothing Happened, explored the psychological aftermath of a sexual assault and premiered at the 2016 Slam Dance Film Festival. In 2018, she wrote, directed, acted, and edited quadruple threat, the Peabody award-winning Random Acts of Flyness for HBO. In 2019, she directed a pilot for Showtime, executive produced by Lena Waithe. In 2020, as part of a multimedia installation produced by Al Jazeera Contrast, she wrote and directed Still Here, a VR experience about the obstacles Black women face when re-entering society after being kidnapped and traumatized by the prison industrial complex. It premiered in the New Frontier section of the Sundance Film Festival. Naima is currently in the woods, literally, uh, developing several projects in the docu-narrative hybrid space that centers that center BIPOC femme taking back their power after survival, surviving hier hierarchical abuses internalized by the dominant social order of white and masculine supremacy. Naima, same. That's what I've, that's totally what I, that's what I've been doing. Wow, well, that's what we comments. That is so weird. So you're literally in the woods. What woods are you in? Um, the Catskills, yes. Catskills? Mm -hmm. That's in New York, right? I'm at, I'm a. It's in New York. Where okay. I don't really know because I don't drive, but someone drove me here. So I know. Okay. Are you based out of New York? Yeah, I'm from Flatbush, Brooklyn, originally. Nice. Nice. Uh, well, then let's bring on our other panelists today to compete for prizes. Tyler Tice is a New Jersey native and writer of horror-ish screenplays. His script Day Shift won the grand prize at the 2017 Slamdance Screenwriting Competition. It's now in development at a major studio, and he lives in Fernandina Beach, Florida, with his pregnant wife, two kids, and a dog. Yikes. Fernandina, did I say that right? You did, I think so. I just moved here, so <laughs> I think that's what they call it. And what brought you to Fernandina Beach? You're just uh, a big Jacksonville Jaguars fan and you had to get- I just had to be here. Had to be there? <laughs> You're like, I have to go to games. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, I was actually gonna move back to LA. I was living in Jersey at my dad's house. I lived in LA for years and I was gonna move back. I was actually out in LA at the end of February with my whole family looking at places and then COVID hit and I never moved. So I just decided to kind of come down to a small beach town in Florida and kind of ride the thing out here. My wife is from this area. We're having another kid. We got family in the area. So nice. figured it was a good place to post up for the time being. Smart. You know, I'm doing all my meetings on Zoom anyway. Might as I well know, what, what, what does it matter? None of it matters. Yeah. <laughs> What matters? <laughs> <laughs> nothing, nothing matters. So also we were supposed to be joined by Jessica Sinyard. Uh, she's not gonna be able to join us today. So I'll probably just talk a lot more, which I know is what we all want. Um, so we're just gonna have a conversation. Uh, first, I just wanna start about Slam Dance. You both are Slam Dance alum, festival screenwriting competition. Kind of where were you in your career when you submitted to Slam Dance? Uh, and at what point, once you just, once you submitted, once you got in, like what, where were you in the state of mind and state of career and kind of like, how have things changed since that from being at the festival, not just slam dance, but like any festival, once you get accepted to any competition or festival, like how did you find you were able to parlay that into other opportunities? Uh, name it. Oh yeah. Um, well, 
before slam dance, I was um, acting, taking acting classes at the Barrow Group. I was a waitress at this restaurant called Flatbush Farm, and I was also a nanny. And I was just sort of saving money in order to make this short, um, which I'm really proud of. Uh, and I mean, it definitely was, definitely was awesome to get the call from Clementine um, Ledger, who was at um, Slam Dance and kind of was like, yo, you got into this film festival. I was like, what is it called? And um, <laughs> and I was like, oh, it's across the street. Okay, cool, cool, cool. But what I loved about uh, Slam Dance is just like, I best selection of shorts. The programming was dope. I feel like I met a lot of amazing filmmakers who I still like continue to, to watch their careers blossom and grow. Um, and it was my first, short film I ever did. And I wrote, directed, acted and edited in it. And um, and then after that, I kind of, you know, I, I during that film festival, I brought a lot of people from Sundance, from Slamdance who needed to see the film to watch it. Um, and I think that just being in that area where people were just very excited and hungry to watch something good. And I think Slamdance is a really dope reputation for form breaking and like things that just kind of um, test the boundaries of what we think cinema is. And um, they gave me a shot. And I think it was an awesome time. And since then, I mean, I've, I don't wanna, I'm not gonna repeat what she said, which was great. <laughs> My bio, I put it all there. <laughs> um, but I've been able to like do a lot of really great things um, in the industry and working at Random Max of Linus was really great. And then I'm working on Betty HBO as well and um, continue to develop my own projects on the side, which now I'm in the woods doing that. So um, it's been a really dope experience, kind of like having a very strong um, support system at Slamdance who just believed in my voice. And then once that hit, I think other film festivals just sort of understood and programmed and it kind of just caught um, like wildfire because it was also kind of around the Me Too movement. And I think there was a lot of resonance whether or not um, yeah, like you just had to pay attention to it. Uh, and yeah, so I've been able to do okay. <laughs> That's great. And what about you, Tyler? Where were you at when you submitted your script? Um, so I was living in the San Fernando Valley, uh, had a wife and a young child. And I just kind of, I was writing for years. I was out in LA for like six years and I was just done. I was like, fuck screenwriting. I can't be a waiter anymore. I'm in my late thirties. So I just gave up. <laughs> I moved back to my dad's house in New Jersey and I started going to community college to be a history teacher. Wow. And my wife was working, not, or my wife was working days. I was going to school at nights. My son, who was like 10 months old at the time, was sleeping. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to write one more script. I had that idea for that vampire script I came up with when I lived in the Valley. I'm just going to write that. I'm going to enter it in every competition and that's it. This is my last hurrah that I'm done. So I wrote the script. I entered it in every competition. And I ended up winning the grand prize in slam dance. So that's what I, my, my advice is when you're ready to give up, when you're completely done, just do one more thing. And, <laughs> that's what happened to me. and just so. keep going forever. Yeah. yeah or, the, or that. Yeah. Whatever works. I was at my mom's house too, writing. So that's also key. Well, I kind of want to ask about that because I want to ask about rejection because I feel like a lot of people, I mean, a lot of people might even be watching this right now being like oh i didn't ma i didn't win this competition or i didn't make it very far do i suck or and like i i feel like to 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 succeed in this business at all you need a very healthy sense of being rejected and and it doesn't need to be a reflection on you and i do you guys how do you guys feel about that i assume before you had success things did not go well and how do you did you find that you dealt with rejection before good things started happening tyler um I get yeah I mean I was out in LA for like six years the only thing that ever really hit like one year I, I actually won another competition it was like uh, five years ago and through that competition competition I got on the blood list which is like all the top uh genre screen unproduced genre screen plays in Hollywood and I thought I was going to make it after that and like that script went out to everybody in Hollywood I got like two meetings off of it and then just nothing and that was that was like a that was hard to take. And then I'm watching all my friends that I, I, you know, I went out there with like make it and like getting these great opportunities and it, it was, it's soul crushing, but I think you just have to persevere because it's not about, you know, when you make it, it's just about making it and just putting in the work. Right. 
Naime, you have any thoughts on being rejected? Maybe you've never yeah, been rejected. I mean, I've been rejected so many times in my life. <laughs> I don't want to really count because, I mean, when I get, came into film, I was coming off of a very serious rejection. Like I used to work in like the think tank space and worked on the Hill in DC. And that oh. was just really not my vibe. They didn't like the way I dressed. They just talked, said mean things to me. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just kidding, but not really. But like, it, you know, rejection is just a part of life. And I feel like by the time I started making films, I had a really good, good amount of it to just like draw from as inspiration that I didn't, when I got rejected from, or didn't win at film festivals, or, you know, um, was really, really close, but like, damn, my best friend won. I just am like, all right, whatever. People don't know what's good until they know, or you just have to show them, or just trust that like, when someone reads your script and like, ah, reads like a novel, it means that they just didn't know how to read it. And that's okay. And like, you just have to figure out if you want to write so that they understand or you want to shoot it you, like just figuring out how much work you want to do and how who you want to build with you know the, the industry is much more vast than i think people understand and sometimes you're like being rejected by um a cool pool of folks but they might not be for you so i feel like you just have to keep um keep swimming and like flowing around things until you know, uh, you hit something. Cause it might not be you who has to change. It might be the industry. So I right. think that that's important. And so the number one question that everyone always has, every aspiring writer who's been writing scripts for years is how do you get an agent? Like how, did, how do you get an agent, right? And so you can try and win a, a competition or do well in a festival and hopefully an agent will approach you, maybe not. Um, the advice I always give people is try to talk to people who you know have agents and like ask them like, hey, what kind of stuff does your agent look for? Uh, or, or the stuff I do, is that interesting to them? You know, the trick I always talk about is you get your friends to read or people you know to read your script for feedback, but you're actually just giving them the script so that they hopefully read it and really like it and want to pass it on. Uh, so what advice would you give to the million dollar question that anybody would have is like, how do you get an agent? Like, what do you do? Where are you going with this one? Um, <laughs> going too no, I'm, I, I like, I just follow my, uh, for most things, I just like shake a magic eight ball and then like, just do what it says. Yeah. I mean, it's, I think it's an intuitive thing. The way I got an agent was like, I was I'm very fortunate to work within like, a great community of filmmakers and Terrence Nance, um, he's a super generous artist. And I believe when he got an agent, he brought um, him over to watch some stuff from, from Random Acts before it was even out. And kind of was just like, here are all these cool people, like you should totally, you know, care about their work. And that's sort of how I got right. my, um, Emerson Davis, who I love at UTA. And so it was just sort of like, not, not necessarily even planned or expecting, but just going with what I liked to do and what I wanted to make work and saying yes. I said a lot of yeses, you know, even though you hear a lot of no's, you know, if people ask you to like work and you're like, oh, I don't, you just say yes, especially if you haven't done it before. Yeah. Um, you learn a lot, you don't know who you're going to meet um, and you can just make it work for you. So I feel like with agents, there were some managers too, I, I courted a few times who did read my my stuff, but I've often found like, some people don't like, sometimes people don't know what they have in their hands. And so you just have to be selective, do your research. Like if you can't take a lot of rejection, do your research. But if you can like, go, go date a lot of people. Right. Something like that. <laughs> No, but that's interesting because I think a lot of people think, oh, Hollywood or the movie business is, oh, it's about who you know, right? And they always assume that means like, oh, do you know studio executives or agents? But no, I think it's, you should know like other creative people that you want to work with. Not only they might help you out or you might help them out making something creatively, but also, you know, rising tides carry all ships. And when good things start happening to people in your community and circle, like you might end up uh, being helped out by that. And I think that's a, a something that people need to realize. And Tyler, what, what do you say? 
Um, I mean, how I got an agent was kind of backwards than how most people get it. After, uh, after I won Slam Dance, uh, a few weeks later, my script actually got uh, optioned. And then like, since it was optioned, it was like producers would come aboard. And then finally we attached a director and then we attached another producer. And then when we finally went to, to uh, sell it to a major studio, one of the director's agent contacted me and she said she wanted to do my negotiation. And if I liked what she did, then I could sign with her. So she handled the negotiation. She crushed it. And I was like, I'm going to sign with you. <laughs> no, I mean, that's my agent. I got a manager through, through that. So I yeah, but went- that's, that's, cool. that's cool. <laughs> well, no, I mean, and that's great. And like a lot of, cause agents are often, you know, soul sucking people who just want money. Right. Um, not all of them. That's what's good about them too. I guess. Right. So the moment you have an opportunity to make someone else money, like they're there, they're there for you. So if yeah. you are presented with, you know, if you have a film play or if you have a screenplay that wins something and someone's interested, the easiest way to get an agent is you email them or call them up and be like, Hey, I'm think someone's kind of interested in this thing I'm doing. I don't really know what I'm doing, but you would get 10%. And they're like, huh, what, huh? Um, because agents worry about money. Like that's literally their job is to get 10% of your income. And so if you present that to them, uh, you might get some interest. But that's a good segue actually about, you mentioned optioning the script. Um, you know, a lot of uh, questions people have is when you do start to have some sort of success, right? Like if you do option a script or set something up, it's usually not for a ton of money. Like you might option a script for, Five thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars or mine was a thousand. So thousand dollars, right? So you start f- feeling like hot shit. You're like, oh, I've optioned a screenplay. What advice would you give to people who are in that circumstance of like, do you quit your job and go full in and like max out your credit cards, or do you hold on to the job and try to make writing your side hustle, or if you are going to try to keep it? Because the advice I always give people is try to have a job that's not gonna just take up all your time. Like a lot of people think, oh, if I'm an assistant at a production company or something, or if I'm, I'm a PA, that'll get me in, in the industry. But you work 18 hours a day and you're exhausted when you get home. So I'm like, go deliver pizza. And then when you're done at the, the night, you can write, you know, cause you have some mental energy. So like, what advice would you guys give to people who are not sure whether they should just go for it or try to balance both? I'm kind of starting to become a writer, but I've also, not fully there yet. Um, Tyler, why don't you go first? Yeah, Tyler, you go first. Okay. Well, I, uh, I mean, I was a, pretty much my whole adult, adult life. I've either been a waiter or a house painter. So I, and then going back between those, and that just always gave me a lot of time to write. And even after it was option, I'm not going to live off a thousand dollars. And I had two kids at the time, so I just kept my waiting job. And uh, with a wait with a job like waiting tables, there's always time to write. You know, it doesn't take up too much of mental space. It's decent money. You can do it wherever you want to go. So I didn't, I didn't quit my day job until like we got in at a major studio and I finally got some real money. But up until then I was always writing. And I guess the good thing about writing too, is as opposed to like acting or, or something, you can write whenever there's always time to write. You do it by yourself. You do it in your home. So you just, you just work around your schedule. But yeah, I don't say, I say, don't quit your J job until you have enough to live off of. <laughs> I'm not going to max out my credit cards. I got kids. Right. Mm-hmm. That's good advice. I'm, mm, I'm a bit, no, I wouldn't say I was reckless. I, I mean, like when I, so essentially like the film is about this time where I had to like quit my job to go home to like take care of myself. So it's inspired by that. I didn't necessarily know what I was going to do. So I did do like four jobs, like being a nanny, which was actually like babysitting, I don't know, it keeps you so present in the moment that um, it's a good mindful practice. And I kind of credit it, like you can take a kid anywhere. So you can also just like explore New York and be in all these weird places and eavesdrop on people's conversations because you have a cute baby and it's like really good for writing, like at least for me. Um, So, I mean, everyone should just do what feels most comfortable for you. Um, I haven't had anything of my own IP yet optioned but I have been able to like completely um, devote myself to writing for television and then writing for myself and then directing. And then like, you know, I still do self tapes for auditions. So I, I personally try to do everything at the same time because it's what is fun for me. 
um, and I can kind of like write wherever I go on my phone. Um, although it is, it's a lot slower when you're kind of that scattered and I'm kind of in that place where I'm like, mm, I think I need to choose at least one for a longer bit of time to finish that screenplay. Um, but, you know, I think it's just up to you. Like if your mom will let you crash on her couch for two or three years to write something out, then like, and she gets it, then do that. Um, asking friends to like take care of you, working three jobs if you need to. But I think if you really wanna like go all in and you have that support, great. But I don't know. I don't have the answer. I feel like- No, no one know. has the answer. That's why we're here today. Yep. But that's a good segue. You guys are providing me great segues for my pre-written questions of how much, because I think a lot of people don't realize once you become a writer, a uh, paid writer, like most, I've been doing this for 18 years now. And most of the money I've ever made is just assignment work, right? Or like jobs, people need a script rewritten or they need a book adapted or they need to hire you on staff for something. And I think a lot of people have this perception of being a writer is like, no, I just write screenplays and then sell them to people and they get made. Um, but that's few and far between in my experience. In 18 years, I've even optioned very few of my own screenplays, but you write an original screenplay, people read it and then they're like, hey, I don't wanna make this cause it's weird, but I do wanna hire you to make the Care Bears movie or whatever. So my question for you guys is like, how much time do you guys, cause I have writer friends who say, oh, I don't develop anything new anymore. I just want assignment work. That's where the money is. Then I have other writer friends who are like, I just wanna spend all my time writing original stuff and trying to get it made. So like, where do you guys fall on that? Like how much time do you wanna just work on your own stuff? And then how much are you just like, you know, I want to go out there and get writing assignments and like find the work that needs me. Ooh, I mean, for me, I'm like split down the middle because, right. you know, I I make my short films, which I write, edit, direct on my own, but I need, I need money to do right. that. It's <laughs> expensive. So I will like direct and like do for higher stuff. And um, how I, reconcile that is like I only do stuff that I feel very passionately about so like if it's in alignment with you know transformative stories or censoring black women or you know a lot of things that I'm interested in of that moment then it's not it doesn't feel like a split for me um and it also kind of gives me some more confidence when I can also learn about like oh okay this is a set that's well financed like this is how you know like directing that pilot has made me definitely better at my job figuring out how to manage smaller scale projects too that maybe I can only make for like 5k or 10k um so and and I say only but that's like a lot of money for for people like yeah it took me so long to save money for and nothing happened and that was shot in my mom's house and I think I, I spent maybe 7k um and I believe in pe paying people <laughs> like I don't believe in that um especially like just 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 pay people um so I split it off and then you know, I think one one day when I feel maybe I don't have to like be in survival mode because of where I'm from. And like, I think it's also a bit different depending on your background. Like I grew up um, in a single parent household, you know, on welfare. And um, now it's nice to make money, but I'm also trying to like think of how to create a nice little cushion where I can be like, no to all this, these projects and I'm only doing me. So, um, you know, I think you can try to straddle both if, if it feels available to you. Right. Um, and that's where I'm at. What about you, Tyler? Uh, well, so far I've only gotten paid off the one thing, the, the, <laughs> the, the one script that won Slam Dance three years ago. I worked on it for three years, rewriting it over and over and over again. But now that that's in development at a studio, it's basically, I just go on generals, you know? I go on generals all week long. I sit on this same thing and I talk to somebody in LA and we like hang out and we see if they want me to write. But like for me, I'll write it. I just want to get paid. You know, I got mouths to feed. So I'll do assignment work. I'll do whatever they want me to do. And then as far as my, I have a manager and um, as far as writing original stuff, it's not like, I thought like when I became a writer, I would be like, I'm going to write this. And then I just write that. And then like someone passes it around and tries to sell it. But no, I've been, it, I've been pitching projects to my manager for like four months now. And I finally, he finally signed off on one. And now I'm still I, now for the like the last month we've been tinkering with that and I haven't even started writing that yet. So it's just a long process and it's 
Yeah. And I think a lot of people don't realize, like I have an agent and a manager and a lot of people don't really, but I don't like read the trades. I don't read the variety. I don't know what's going on. And <laughs> the reason I find my manager invaluable is because I'll call him up and be like, I have a brilliant idea for a TV show. It's about a bunch of people who find themselves living in the afterlife. And he's like, yeah, no, that show's called The Good Place. It's already in development over at NBC. I'm like, shit, okay. And <laughs> it's good to have you, if you're not someone who pays attention to what's going on in the industry, it's, it's good to have someone who does that because when you think you have a great idea, they'll be like, oh no, that show is already in development or someone's already making that movie or blah, blah. And you're like, oh, because you, if you are gonna spec something, if you're gonna write it as your own piece, you want it, no one else to already be making that. Um, so that's why, you know, the exact thing that you're trying to do, um, because then it just gives a pe reason, people a reason to say no, you know? Um, yeah. And so yeah. it's kind of good to have someone to bounce ideas off of, just to be like, hey, is this a good idea that I spend months of my time working on the script uh, about this thing? And they're like, no, probably not. And that's why it's good to just have a lot of ideas. Yeah. Um, and uh, so going off of that, actually, how much do you guys try, not like reading Variety or Hollywood Reporter or Deadline, but how much do you guys try to keep up with what's going on? Do you, do you watch a lot of stuff? Do you read a lot of scripts? Because no. I try, but it's hard. I don't have time, honest. Well, I have time for what I make time for. And for me, I, I just, I feel more inspired by like reading novels, to be quite honest, or I actually try not to when I'm writing scripts. I don't want to read other people's writing because I think it kind of like, I'm just easily, um, I'm just sensitive. So I'll like go to art galleries and like look at work that might inspire some weird ideas and like wander um, and I'll read stuff, but I don't read and necessarily pay a ton of attention to like um, what's on television uh, or what, you know, what is like the hottest film people are talking about. Um, unless it feels like I absolutely have to maybe know about it for like a meeting. <laughs> but um, yeah, I just, I, I find that I don't have as much time to like binge watch things. And I think that's okay. You know, I think everyone is, is creates in their own way. I mean, I like walking in parks and hugging trees and like, that's, that's <laughs> what I get inspired by. Or like, you know, hanging out with my mom and be like, what's, what's the news for like, that you're interested in and hearing her complain about like Donald Trump. Um, which I will not watch, but you know what I mean? So there's like, it's, it's, I get, I get, I get it from um, like living out in the world. Uh, and, but that's a good idea in terms of pitching to a manager and seeing like, I got to do that more often. Cause I definitely, <laughs> in my own world, I'll be like, it's brilliant. And then I'm like, oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> We're out there, but whatever. It's fun. <laughs> what about you, Tyler? Do you binge watch uh, 13 no. Reasons Why? <laughs> no, I don't have any. I mean, growing up, I watched everything. Like, I, if you want to talk about like movies from like the '80s and '90s, like early 2000s, I'm there. But like present day, I, I I don't watch anything. I mean, like like she said, if I have a meeting and I know like they made this movie, I'll try and watch it. But it's just, it's hard for me even like after after my day and putting all the kids to bed and, and, and like I have like maybe an hour before I pass out. You know, mm -hmm. so like I, I, I am, I'm more inspired by novels. I like, I probably am, I, even though I'm a feature writer, I like TV, probably more inspired by TV. It's easier to, uh, to, to watch for me just cause like, you know, it's in, it's broken up. I can watch like a half hour or an hour at night. Um, but I, I, I'm like kind of out of the loop. I don't pay attention to what goes on Hollywood. I live in Florida, you know, and like, like you said, it's, that's what my manager's for. He knows yeah. everything. Yeah. Like I'll, I'll wake up in the morning and think I have the best idea in the fucking world. I'll write it down and I'll be like, no, this is already set up at Amazon. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, oh, well. Yeah. My relationship now with. I did pay more attention, but I also hate most movies nowadays too. So. I know that's a problem. <laughs> my, my relationship with consuming media now is like, let me, I, when, once everyone decides it's good, I, I might check it out. Like <laughs> if they're like, have you seen this new show? I'm like, let me know if it's still good in season five. <laughs> and then I'll and then I will watch it. Then I'll dip my toe in there. <laughs> yeah, and then at the end of the year, I try to see as much of the you know awards fair, both independent and studio fair. That, but once you're in the Writers Guild, you get DVDs, guys. They just send it to your house. You don't. Oh, do really? it anywhere. I just joined. I didn't know that. I'm also. Oh yeah. 
I'm in the other one. I'm in the East. So I don't know if they do the same thing. Oh, then I don't know how that works. I'm sure you do. You'll get some. You'll get some. It's great. Um, I'm in four unions and I get so many DVDs. (laughs) I get four copies of whatever the new hot movie is. Um, And so, okay, so we'll start wrapping it up here because we got to get to these awards. But uh, if I had a time machine, you guys could go back five years ago and give yourself one piece of advice. What do you think you would tell yourself? Like I'll, I'll filibuster, I'll just tell you what I would do as I would go back and tell myself, you gotta not spend too much time working on one thing because the moment you go, if you work on a script, you said you, know, you, said you were working for a script for three years. I've worked on scripts for three years and then you go in and people are like, no, that's a cool idea. Not for us. What else do you have? You know, and you have to be able to like have other things to talk about. And so I would have told myself, like, don't spend too long working on one idea or one project. Just get it to a place that you think it's presentable, but then move on to something else. Because it's better to have like a vast library of stuff than like one thing you've been working on forever. So that's what I would have told myself. And that's what I tell all the kids these days. But is there any like piece of advice you wish you kind of had known five years ago? Yeah, I I would probably agree with what you said there because it's like once my script hit, I didn't really have anything else. Right. (laughs) Like, well, what else do you have? I'm like, nothing. (laughs) Like and I I guess something I've 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 learned recently with with like, you know, going with my working with my manager and stuff is is trying to have more high concept stuff where I think I was more of like a low concept guy. And I would like go into these meetings and try and pitch these big, sprawling, like novelish things and, and they and they it's like you could just see their eyes glaze over it. And that's kind of what I've, I've always, I, I like movies like that. But like, if I knew to just like keep like it one sentence, like my script is this. And that ever since I've kind of adopted that, I've, I've done a lot better. Yeah. The elevator pitch, they call it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about you, Naomi? Yeah, I kind of, well, yeah. One, you never need as much time as, you think you do it's a it's kind of an illusion and I think the more you work the more you realize in an affirming way that like oh that's that's what you have to get the show oh wow like that's a that's two pages like that's just like it's just you know I think there's like an element of confidence and like if you have it here trust it and pitch it um write it down of course but like yeah like um all your ideas are valid and and I wouldn't pay too much attention to the market, but like make sure your team definitely is. And um, what else? Um, I think energy begets energy. So don't ask for permission. You know, if you wanna work on something or make a short film, always have something like lined up. Cause if you're out of work and you're really depending on an industry, like I think that could be very soul sucking. Yeah. Um, and like you know be like oh, okay y'all don't want to do it like then go over there and make some stuff with your friends and figure out a way to like get them in and back channel them into the industry as well um so that you have more people like you <laughs> to yeah. kind of like support your work and who get it um because I think that's a lot of it too when you're pitching to execs and for sure like keep it sweet short and simple don't throw them the whole thing I've definitely made that mistake pitching like this huge thing and knowing every single scene detail because that's how my brain works, which is fine. But then like, whatever that is, like give them only like a 16th of it. Right. Um, and, you know, it's like, you know, keep them keep them interested so they want to go to the next step versus, oh, I have the whole film and like, you know, yeah. No, and I think that's smart what you said about always try to be making something because like I've always had this philosophy of there should be the three projects my, like the dream project of if someone gave me $40 million, like what would I go do? Then there's the like, the thing I'd really like to be making, which is if someone gave me $5 million or three, three million, like what would I do? And then there's just the thing I'm, I'm making, I'm going to make it. And whether it's making a short film or a low budget feature or writing a novel or just doing something, it's like, no, 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 this is the thing I'm, I'm doing this. And there's nothing to stop me unless I get COVID. Um, so, so I think that's, I think that's, uh, that, that's good. I think we're done. I think people learned a lot. I know I learned a lot. I think we all grew as people today. Um, 
And so now let's give out some awards, you guys. Let's do it. You guys stick around because I think you know who won and I don't uh, for some of these categories. So first up, um, we are going to do shorts. Oh, that's me. And uh, and I believe the some of the filmmakers or the writers are actually he here and might appear on the Zoom. And uh, third, second place, we'll have you say hello. First place, maybe we'll talk for a second. Okay, so here we go. Tyler, I believe you are announcing shorts. Let's hear it in descending order. Uh, hi, everyone. And uh, again, I apologize if I butcher your names. Just, just throwing that out there. So this is for shorts. In third place, we have How to Meal Prep During a Famine by Lindsay Ruglisa. Well, she's not here, so we're not going to acknowledge her. No, congratulations. Oh, there she is. Hi, Lindsay. Hi. <laughs> Congrats. Where are you calling in from today? Uh, Santa Monica. Oh, nice. <laughs> Beautiful weather out there today. Congratulations. What was the name of your short? Uh, how to meal prep during a famine. Is there uh, or do you have any plans to make it? Yeah, sure do. Okay, it's good. currently we'll, in the work, so we'll, we'll see. Where we'll can see. we follow you to keep a lookout for it? Uh, the best place to follow me is probably just my Instagram, which is uh, at Lindsay underscore Ruggles. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for being here today. Thank you. Yay. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, in second place, we have Youth Rejuve by Catherine Voigt. Hi, Hi, Catherine. Welcome. Congratulations. Thank you. Where are you joining us from today? From Highland Park in LA. Oh, beautiful. That's uh, right near me here in Hollywood. Um, uh, what, what about you? Do you have any plans to try to get your short made or to make it yourself, perhaps? I don't. I, am, I would love to make it, but I don't know where to go next. So oh. maybe this will help. <laughs> yeah. Well, how can people reach you or reach out to you? What's a good way? Um, follow you on I guess social media. Is my only public social media. It's at Taco Voigt. V as in Victor, O I G T. And what was that? Twitter? Twitter. Twitter. Perfect. Awesome. Well, thank you for being here today. Congrats. Thank you, thank you so much. Okay. Um, and as you probably know, the first place winner is the Peregrine by Justin Giddings. Justin, congratulations. I really like your Zoom backdrop. It looks so real. <laughs> yeah, I just uh, bought my first home and the internet doesn't work inside. It oh, works in my backyard. That's weird. So that's uh, wh where we're at now. <laughs> where, is, where is this home? Uh, just south of Cincinnati. Oh, nice. Awesome. Yeah. I was in LA for 13 years and uh, that is, had to go. <laughs> had to get out there. <laughs> well, congratulations. What, uh, what's you. the elevator pitch of your short? Tell me about it. Uh, yeah, it's an homage to my uh, grandfather, who at one point was the most decorated CIA agent in the agency's history. Wow. Um, and I didn't really get to say goodbye. And so this was, you know, his house was literally a museum. He, he, he lent out his collections to the Smithsonian. And so my childhood was going to his house, just seeing his knighthood and 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 you know the the largest american military gun collection and this you know the craziness and so he had this like huge impact on my worldview and uh and he passed uh after a long fight but kind of out of nowhere at the same time and this was my way of sort of saying goodbye wow that's great did you have to like run it by anyone uh, or get anything redacted before? I, I sent it to granny and granny <laughs> got to, she got to, to edit it. Also a CIA agent. Uh, oh, you're muted. Oh no, you muted yourself or someone muted you. Maybe it was I'm Russia. Muted. Maybe right, Russia. right, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, so Granny weighed in on it, and Granny signed off on it. That's so great. We're good. <laughs> and uh, so, do you uh, you want to try to make it? Are you going to try to get that thing done? Yeah, yeah. Um, I've got a, a directing partner. We make a lot of stuff together, and uh, it's definitely on the docket. And then I work. My job is helping filmmakers crowdfund. So I also wanted oh. to say to the other two finalists, um, just hit me up. I'd I'd love to work for you for free. 
um, no. to help you yeah. get it funded if you want to get uh, it. And how would, uh, what, how do people follow you or get in touch with you? Yeah. Uh, slash Justin Giddings on pretty much most stuff. Okay. That's sweet. Me. Awesome. Well, congrats. And also, Thank I think you. I forgot to mention you. I think you get $2,000, right? I think that's. Oh, <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> oh, I hope sweet. Hopefully okay. that's true. <laughs> Hopefully right. that's true, and I didn't promise you two thousand dollars. I'll send an invoice, and they'll be like, "Yeah, okay. Todd." But I really after that. I believe up. that is a thing. Uh, so so great. Okay, well, thanks, thanks, yeah, guys. Thank you so much. So you here. Okay, so next we're gonna move on to uh, TV pilots. I don't know if you heard, but TV's the new movies. So yeah. Mm -hmm. That's that I just read that in deadline. So today, uh, so we're gonna do uh, Naima. I believe you are going to announce, yeah, first, second, and third place in TV pilots. So let's hear it. Third place. Third place goes to Ricky Blywis for Morning After. All right, <laughs> Ricky. Do we have Ricky? Oh, oh, there he is. There she is. I'm sorry. Oh, look at me. I'm so sorry. Ricky, Great welcome. Start. Where are Hi. you? Where are you joining us from today? Austin, Texas. Oh, I went to school, uh, Hook'em Horns in Austin. Yeah. yeah, I'm a UT grad student. Oh, nice, nice. Uh, what a uh, uh, the college of communication or? Yeah, in the screenwriting program. Nice. Tell uh, um, tell everybody. It's, is Ramirezburg still there? Mm -hmm. Tell Richard Lewis I said hello. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, congrats. Uh, so do you, uh, you wrote the short, are you going to try to get it made? You're going to try to make it? Um, I wrote the pilot originally. Oh, I'm sorry, it, was pilot. Something, it was something that I thought, yeah, I could do this myself maybe over the summer and then COVID. People, well, yeah. Oh yeah. But people, I don't think, I think a lot of people don't realize that is a thing that people make the pilots of their shows, you know? There's a lot of success stories of people just going out there and doing it and then someone seeing the pilot and then letting them make the show or keeping the pilot or reshooting the pilot. Um, and but it happens all the time. So that's great. And how would anyone follow you on social media? Are you on the socials? I am. I'm Rick at night on Twitter. I'm the person who tweets all the killer writing advice if you've ever seen it. <laughs> oh, great. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, awesome. Congratulations. And thank you for being here today. Thanks. All right. Second place in TV pilots. What do we got? Second place is Kevin Wolf for Below the Fold. Hi, Kevin. Hey, how's it going? Thanks for being here today. Where are you calling in from? Um, I am calling in from Naples, Florida. I'm usually in LA, but I'm hiding out here with my partner for a little while. How close is that to where you are, Tyler? Uh, that's like on the opposite, complete opposite side. I'm Northeast Florida. He's Southwest Florida. Well, I don't care. You guys should hang out. <laughs> you can scrub across the swamp. <laughs> well, well, congrats, Kevin. So uh, what about you? Any thoughts to like just going out there and try to make the pilot or is it something that you... Well, this pilot is a, has a gigantic cast and it's set in the 1950s. So it's a little less um, DIY friendly. Okay. Um, I do have a queer horror short that I'm working on now, which feels a little more makeable. I'm nice. Yeah. Well, how can people, are you on the socials and people follow you to hang out? I'm in fact on the socials. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Kevington, K-E-V-I-N-G-T-O-N underscore. Awesome. Well, congratulations again, and thanks for being here. Thank you. Be good. Watch out for hurricanes. <laughs> um, and then first place, I think winning $2,000. I don't know. Hopefully someone corrects me if I'm saying that wrong. Uh, who we got? We got Meredith Casey for Lifeline. Do we have Meredith? Is do we have Meredith? There she is. That her? There she is. You're muted. You're muted. There, there we are. go. <laughs> Welcome. Congrats. Thank you so much. I'm so excited. Thank where are you? Where are you joining us from today? Uh, Los Angeles in, in nice. Los Feliz. Oh, great! I used to live in Los Feliz, right by the old uh, Vista. Yeah. Uh, um, so tell us about the pilot. Give me the elevator pitch. I'm a TV sure. executive. We're in the elevator. Let's hear about it. Okay, so um, it's uh, it's a it's based upon a, a, 
a true moment in my life, but it's about a, um, a young woman from a dysfunctional family has to do community service at a suicide hotline after her own suicide attempt goes wrong. Wow. <laughs> but it's a comedy. I was about to say, is it a comedy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah um yeah it's a it's a comedy it's based off of a, a time uh when i called the suicide hotline a few years ago wow uh, yeah it was about like seven years ago and and uh called the hotline and um you know worst night of my life bearing my soul to this complete stranger over the phone and uh she was awesome her name was Beth. she was great she listened she was fabulous and you know at the worst time of my life in the middle of all that, you know, intensity, um, I heard someone in the background of the suicide hotline just yell, who the fuck ate my egg salad sandwich? <laughs> <laughs> it, um, it just made me laugh and, and took me right out of it. And um, I remember I like wrote that down right afterwards and I was like, holy shit, that was the funniest thing that's ever happened to me that's and i great. think it also saved my life <laughs> that's great well how can uh how can people follow you or, or uh, are you on any of the social medias i am yeah i'm on instagram as at murder death casey <laughs> i'm a good time i'm perfect. a lot of fun <laughs> perfect well congratulations uh, i believe two thousand dollars is coming your way i don't know I, again hopefully slam dance is not DM'd me to tell me to stop saying that. So <laughs> I might start upping the price for the next category. <laughs> uh, but congrats, much. that's awesome. And, uh, and, and good luck. I'm Thank sure you. uh, you'll find great success. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it, Todd. Thank you guys. All right, thanks. All right, so now we're gonna move on to features. Oh no, sorry. Yes, so feature horror thriller feature which Tyler, I believe you are going to announce. Me again. Um, here we go. Okay, and this is the uh, this is the category I won three years ago, so you're in good Oh, wow. All right. And so just so you know, to all the winners, like you might be, find yourself on a panel with me next year. Like, I mean, <laughs> isn't that the biggest prize of all? <laughs> so sorry, continue, third place. <laughs> third place, we have Goodbye Lyrics by Daniel Russell. I'm here. Oh, hello, Daniel. Can you see me? I can't see me. We can't. It's fine. I mean, we see your name. Perfect. You can, can hear me. hear you. Wonderful. One second. Let me... Uh... There you oh. are. Hello. Hi. Good. How are you today? Very good. Thank you. Congratulations. Where, uh, where are you? Oh, hello, dog. What, what's the dog's name? Uh, Bella. Hey, Bella. Oh, watching TV. Uh, oh. Where are you joining us from today? I'm in the valley, actually. Um, oh, excellent. Right by like Sherman Oaks. Nice, so uh, your feature, I wanna hear, I wanna hear, the, what's the one sentence log line? I wanna hear it. I mean, it's, it's a trippy script. It's about a, a guy who lost his wife on their honeymoon and he's going to a therapist and he's convinced that a dark entity that uh, haunted her as a child is now haunting him and that his life is under threat. But oh, nothing, wow. it's kind of like I always, kind of describe it, it's a mix of like M. Night Shyamalan and like David Lynch. It's kind of- Nice. Crazy. See, now he did a smart move. He did the, it's blank meets blank, which- no, I'm video. doing that script, it really does. It's a, it's a trippy- It's smart. A bunch of weird stuff in it. I actually never thought it would win. I wrote it for me. I didn't write it to win a competition, but- so There you go. And I submitted it, so. That's good, that's great. Uh, do you think there's any chance you might just try to be able to go make it independently? Or is it- I, I, not to get too far into it, but I actually wrote it as a short in 2011, almost a decade ago, as something I would shoot, but it was just a little above my like $5,000 uh, budget. So then I turned it into, but it could easily be made for a couple hundred thousand. So my goal is to get it made. It's a, 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 a micro budget. Script. Well, how can people follow? Are you on social media? How can people follow you? I use my birth name. I was born in another country. So I use my birth name, Goran Duke, for like Instagram. It's G O Y. N-D-U-K. Uh, I also have an email, which I use for like, I, I work as a video editor and that's just my name. It's film, F-I-L-M at danrussell.net, D-A-N-R-U-S-S-E-L-L.net. That's great. Well, congratulations, man, and good luck. Appreciate it. Pet Bella for me. I will. All right. 
All right, so moving on to horror thriller, second okay. place. Second place, we have Dying on the Pass by Jackson Burbaum. Burnbaum. Jackson Burnbaum. Hey. 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 How's it going? Is that God? Oh, it's Jackson. That is God. Yes. Hi, Jackson. I mean, same difference. But hey, um, cool. So what's we, up? Uh, we can't see you, but that's fine. You know what? We're all fine. Yeah. Oh, yeah sure. oh, here you come. There hey. you are. Hi. Hey. Uh, where are you coming from today? Where are you joining me? Uh, Glendale. Oh, beautiful Glendale. I used yeah. to live right there in Outwater Village. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, spent a lot of time in the Americana. Uh, what, uh, so what is your script? And give me the, I want to hear the elevator pitch for it. I mean, simplest elevator pitch is Kitchen Confidential by way of Naked Lunch. <laughs> oh, I like it. Wow, I'm in. I'll, I'll pre-order my ticket. Oh, yeah, please do. Yeah. Do you feel like it's something that you could uh, get some friends together and go make off a uh, um, budget or is it something bigger? It, it needs a bit of a budget uh, just for creature effects, but um, you know, never say never. Yeah, that's great. Well, and how can uh, people, are you on the social media for people to follow you, people get in touch? Uh, yeah, I am on Instagram. Uh, it's whiskey monomore, all one word. Awesome. Cool. Awesome. Well, thanks. Congrats, man. Hey, thank you. Yeah. Thanks for being here. All right. Cheers. Be good. Bye. All right. Okay. And first place winning. And in first place, we have $1,000. <laughs> we have Our Gods Within by Alex Lupriti. Hey. Hi, you guys Alex. Hey, how are you? Good. Where are you coming from? I am in Austin, so. Oh, also Austin. Also, I was in LA for about seven years and I didn't hate every second of it. I hated like the last, actually it grew on me. I hated it and then loved it. And then I didn't want to leave, but I was forced out because I was broke. Oh, uh, where in Austin are you? Uh, just central-ish, south central. I don't, um, south of the river. I used river. to live like, uh, North Campus. I used to deliver pizza for Double Dave's, home of the pepperoni. Well, room. I, you know, there's another UT alum on here. I went to UT as well. Um, yeah, me too. But I was a biology major, so I didn't, I made films with friends, and then I went to school and did bio and psychology, which was totally different than, you know. Nice. Filmmaking. I lived on Duval Street, the Chateau Duval, 3106. I don't know if it's there anymore. I lived on 35th and, uh, you know where the, you know where the old, sorry, 35th and Guadalupe. So oh I was, yeah, I, I, yeah. Yeah, I was right. That was in my to delivery you. area. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Toy Joy and all that. No one yeah. cares about this. So let's hear about your script. Uh, uh, what's the pitch? Tell us about it. The I mean, I, it's it's a more meets annihilation, which is a really hard pitch. People have a hard time grappling with that, but it's really about palliative care. It's about you know my parents are getting older, and it's about just uh, it's about a small couple. This is kind of a weird one. It's about a small couple or an older couple rather living in the shadows of like a failed space elevator. And the space elevator actually serves as a conduit and brings down sort of like this botanical parasite from space, essentially. Wow. And essentially what happens is the husband, when, the, when this film opens, the husband is dying in bed. And on page 13, he miraculously just wakes up and is like, if he was never sick. And it's this weird sort of like, it's a mix of like mother and um, amour and annihilation and take shelter and all kinds of stuff. But wow. it's sort of like a bit of like a monster in the house type situation. But, um, you know, essentially it's about being a caretaker. It's a lot about, you know, the wife taking care of her dying husband and also knowing that, you know, the inevitable truth is he is going to die. Um, and she contracts the same illness. So she actually had to watch her husband die. And then when she gets the same illness, it's like, oh, I already know what's going to happen to me. And this is a essentially turns you into like a weird tree person where literally wow. vines and stuff grow out of you. And then um, you sort of return to the earth in the form that you came in. It's kind of a weird high concept, low concept. It all takes place in essentially like one or two locations. So it sounds great. Does it sound like something you could try and go out there and make yourself? That was the goal. That was the goal. You know, it was, you know, I've, I've directed three or four shorts. Um, you know, I, I'm also a producer by day. I mean, I work in the commercial world here in Austin. So I mean, I could spin up a crew and get it made, but you know, I'm not a producer in a sense that, you know, I have 
connections to, you know, a million and a half dollars to get it done, but you know, I can line produce the shit out of it or I could direct (laughs) it, but you know, I don't have the money to make it. So hopefully this will, this will help. Are you on the social medias? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I am Arlax, uh, A-R-L-Y-A-X at Twitter. Um, that's probably the best way I'm not, I deactivated Facebook Good. in my Instagram. Yeah. It's an evil company. And then Instagram, (laughs) Instagram, it's like, there's some, I put some stuff on there, but I'm not really on it, but yeah. So you can follow me at Twitter and, um, if you, you know, just disregard, I guess, my like crazy political rants and all that stuff, but we're living in a crazy time. So. Well, that's great. Yeah. Congrats. Thank and, you. Uh, Thank you. And uh, good luck with it and order some pepperoni rolls for me. God, I hope so. Yeah, I will. I will. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thanks yeah. for being here. Congrats. Absolutely. Thank you. And enjoy that $2,000. So I'm going to use that to actually make a short that I was oh, going to make before COVID and COVID shut it down. So the money I lost being unemployed during COVID will go back to making that. There you go. We're like the stimulus bill. Exactly. Yeah. I needed it. I really yeah. needed it. Thank you, guys. <laughs> All right. So then next up is the uh, features, which is me. Um, I'm going to announce it. Pulling double duty here. So in features, third place. As You Wish by Suhashini Krishnan. Is she here to tell me that I pronounced her name wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Five, four, three, two. Well, if she shows up, we'll talk. If not, how about second place, Funeral Season by Jake Hirsch, who I see is already joined us. Hi, Jake. Hey, everyone. Hi. Hi, welcome. Where are you joining us from today? From Brooklyn, so nice. a little different than everyone else. <laughs> You're staying safe, though. So uh, tell us about the, the script. What's the, uh, uh, the, the log line for it? Yeah, so here's my log line. Helen wants to live so she can redeem herself as a children's book author, while Judy wants to die so she can join her husband in the afterlife. As her friends die around them, this elderly f- duo faces his death directly on a funeral road trip. So it's two 70 year olds on a funeral road trip. Wow, that's great. Yeah. Is it something you think you could go out there and try to get made independently? Maybe, I think like other people discussed in the panel, it'd be great to use it as like a jumping off point to work more as a writer and maybe option it. Um, But I'm definitely willing to collaborate with someone to make this work and make it happen. That's great. Well, are you on the social medias if people want to follow you and keep up? Yeah, you can follow me at the Jake Hirsch Hirsch spelled H-I-R-S-C-H. And my website is the Jake Hirsch, same spelling, dot com. So you can find all my stuff there. And yeah, yeah, thank you so much. Awesome. Thanks for being here. Congrats. Thank you. Uh, and sorry, I'm being told by my producers that Suhashini is here now. So let's bring her in. I have some questions about the impeachment. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry, um, did I say, did I butcher your name? I'm sorry. No, no, you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, congrats. Congrats. Where are you joining us from today? Uh, the Bay Area. Nice. I like there's a dog picture. Is that your dog? That is our dead dog. Oh. <laughs> the moment I asked that question, I kind of knew that's what the answer was going to be. And I regretted asking the question. No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she she uh, passed away in May. <laughs> okay. Sorry to hear that. We was have it two other dogs. It's was okay. It um. Well, congrats. Tell me about the script. What's the, give me the elevator pitch. Uh, It is a body swap comedy where two Indian women from wildly different backgrounds end up switching bodies. And instead of learning about each other, they uh, sort of learn about themselves and their identity and their culture. That's awesome. (laughs) Is it it set, where is it set in the Bay Area? New York. Nice, nice. Well, that's awesome. Are you on uh, any, is it something that you can, you feel like you could maybe make or something that you would want to just use as like a- I just, I just want to write. I don't want to do it. No, not myself for sure. Okay, great. Um, And are you on the socials if people want to follow you, see what's going on? Uh, yeah, I deactivated most of my socials until after the election is over because my Perfect. husband tells me it's not nice to yell at people. Um, but I am on Instagram where I mostly post pictures of our dogs. Um, so it's uh, sushi.carl, K-H-A-R-R-L dot Krishnan, K-R-I-S-H-N-A-N. 
Great. Uh, I mean, if you want to yell at people online, that's fine. I know you <laughs> want to make America great again. That's all we want is just to make. Yeah. <laughs> I assume everyone here just wants to make America great again. Yeah. So, well, congrats. Thank Thanks. you for joining us you. and good luck. Uh, and then finally, first place in features winning a million dollars. What? Uh, $2,000. Uh, Sweet 16 by Joyce Cherie. <laughs> yeah. Can oh, you hear yeah, me? I got it. I, I can hear you. Yes. Hi. Hi. Welcome. Where are you joining us from today? I'm in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Nice. Very nice. Yeah. So let's hear about the script. Uh, tell oh. me about it. Yeah, Sweet Sixteen is a labor of love. Um, it actually, it's inspired by a true story. Like some of it is, like 85% of it is true. Um, it's a coming of age story uh, about a young girl um, who all she wants is to have a perfect Sweet Sixteenth birthday. Uh, but the financial challenges that she faces with her parents force her to come to terms with the hard truths of some of her friendships and her family and even herself. So it's a, a story about a pursuit of a universal rite of passage with a little bit of magical realism thrown in there um, as she takes her premature journey towards adulthood. Well, that sounds great. Is it something that you would yourself try to want to go make or is it? Yeah, it's my first, it's gonna be my first feature that I direct. So great. Um, I've done uh, quite a few short films um, and I'm just, this was the film that I was like, okay, I've done all these shorts. Now I'm ready to direct. Like, this is going to be my jam. <laughs> and would you make it in Virginia world. Beach? No, I mean, it depends on who has those tax incentives popping off. You know, I, um, <laughs> <laughs> who knows? Uh, especially since COVID, I don't know what the landscape, I went to Tish, So I'm like really familiar with the independent filmmaking way of doing things, but who knows what the landscape of it is now since, you know, all this stuff that's happening. So we'll see what's possible, but yeah, whoever, I would like it to be set in the South cause that's where I'm from. Um, but we'll see whoever has, you know, the best deal for us and what we can get. So that's great. Are you originally from Virginia Beach or? Yeah, I'm, I'm originally from Norfolk, Virginia, which is about 15, 20 minutes away from where I live now. Um, I, I was living in California. I moved to, I, well, I can't say I moved here. I do technically still have an apartment in California. But um, since everybody is remote right now and all the general meetings are remote, I'm like, well, I would rather go be with my parents yeah, yeah. <laughs> for that's a smart. little bit. So I'm, um, you know, I took the chance and came across country. Uh, that's great. Well, how can people keep track of you? Are you on the socials? Yeah, I'm Joyce Cherie on everything. So uh, not really TikTok? difficult to find me. <laughs> are you on TikTok? Uh, I'm not on I'm not doing TikTok. I don't you can't understand. That's do for it. the kids. I guess that's for the kids. I'm yeah. good, man. Yeah. I'm on Instagram. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, still on uh, Facebook. I'm, that's not a political thing, though. And I'm also on Twitter. <laughs> that's great. Um, but yeah, so. Well, awesome. Congratulations. Yeah, this is great. Thank you so guys so much. I really appreciate it. Yeah, and I enjoy that and that that cash money. Oh, I appreciate Yeah, I'm going to put it towards producing this film. We'll see what that's happens. That's great. Awesome. <laughs> All right, well, finally, we're moving on to the big prize of the night, the grand prize winner, which I believe wins $8,000. I'm not making that part up. It's actually true. This is what has been told to me. Um, and Albert Munoz from the Writers Guild West uh, has returned. He's been busy working in the, the hour since we last saw him and he's back to announce the grand prize winner of this year's slam dance screenplay screenwriting awards 2020 this, this year's grand prize goes to joyce sharif for sweet 16. oh what? she's back there she is I'm glad you didn't immediately log off <laughs> i'm here what wow congratulations thank, thank you guys <laughs> appreciate it oh man this is like i'm gonna get emotional because <laughs> Uh, I've been writing the script for a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> That's so I've been great. writing the script for a very, very long time. <laughs> oh wow! Thank you guys. So I'm, I'm sorry. I want to go to, but my parents are like screaming in the living room right now, <laughs> watching. <laughs> but um, yeah, thank you. I, this is very encouraging and uh, very. I've been rejected from so many places with this particular screw, uh, script. Um, so this is very, very encouraging. Um, I think I've been writing this since probably 2000, 
14, 15 ish. Um, and it took a lot to get it to where it is because it's such an emotional script. Um, but I'm finally getting it to a place where I'm ready to get it made. So, and this is very, very, very encouraging. So thank you guys so much. Well, that's awesome. Congratulations. And uh, I don't know, I have a bottle of champagne here that I'm gonna start opening as I bring I Peter. I have a, a mason jar of water. <laughs> that works, you know what, that works. Um, so congratulations again, Thank that's you. awesome. Uh, and now we're gonna bring in, before we all drink what our beverage is, as I open this bottle of champagne, we're gonna bring back in Peter Baxter uh, from Slam Dance. Uh, Peter, have you been watching? Yeah, Todd, yeah. Congratulations, Joyce. Thank you so much, Peter. I appreciate it. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's awesome. Congratulations to all the winners. And, um, you know, at Slam Dance, it's, it, it's, it, it's not always about winning. Um, it's about supporting and nurturing. Um, great promise. And this is one of the reasons why we wanted to begin the the, the mentorship award at Slam Dance. And um, like Todd, you know, there are so many um, alumni now that, that, you know, that, that want to give back to our community and have established themselves in the, in the film entertainment business here and um, in LA and also around the world as well. So this is a great opportunity for our alumni to get involved and mentor artists which are coming through. And it really gives me great pleasure to announce the, the winner of the first mentorship award uh, goes to McKinley Belch III uh, for his screenplay, Kind of Blue, Burning Bright. McKinley, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome McKinley, congrats. Thank you, I'm so excited. I'm gonna have to remind myself to breathe. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's great news. The first ever mentorship award. Only bad news is I will not be your mentor. I'm, I apologize for that. Um, <laughs> Peter, do we have the men a mentor lined up, right? Yeah? Yeah, we, we, we do. And, and um, I'm going to assist in that. But Damon Russell, who made this film at Slam Dance a few years ago called Snow on the Bluff, uh, he's Academy winning uh, filmmaker as well. Um, he, he wants to come in and join along with Noel Lawrence, one of, our, one of our judges. And so you've got a team here that wants to support you. And, you know, I think like a lot of screenplays that the judges saw, you know, the things are so close that with, with, with some additional help and some support and ideas to share, um, this screenplay that you've created can be produced. And it's a really exciting project. And we're really uh, very, very happy to be able to announce this mentorship award and, and uh, you, know, you know, please trust us uh, in, in this. You'll, you'll make up your own mind, of course, you know, where you, want to, where, you, where, where you want to take your work, but we really want to support you um, in your next stage of the, the screenplay's development. So congratulations. Thank you, I appreciate it. I'm where happy. are you joining us from today, McKinley? Uh, I'm in Jersey City, New Jersey. Oh, nice, great. Hey. And tell us a little about your script. Uh, what do I say? Uh, it's about a black, queer, homeless poet in New York City who has a really active, surrealistic dream life who's trying to find his voice and um, figure out love at the same time. And he's dealing with his mom dying from afar. And it's probably the most personal and honest thing I've ever written. So I'm really excited that about this, like, kind of validation and encouragement. So I'm excited. That's so great. And if, are you on any social medias if people want to keep up with you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm on Instagram and Twitter, um, at McKinleyBQed, and I'm on Facebook too. Great. Well, awesome. Well, congratulations to everyone. Uh, I think that's about, I think that's about it. I think it's about wrapping it up. So I'm just gonna real quick, I meant to pop this open, but it accidentally just opened on itself. So. <laughs> I just want to thank again the WGA for all of their support. It means a great deal. Uh, the WGA have been with this competition for a very long time. And I also want to thank David Pierce from Pierce Law Group, who's been one of our longest standing sponsors. The prizes also that his company um, is offering are also great. 
These are prizes involving legal work, which I think can come in very, uh, very useful uh, in all kinds of ways, but he is especially interested in supporting writing talent. So thank you very much, David, for everything that you have provided, Sanas. We really appreciate your, uh, your, your prizes and, and your ongoing support. And uh, to, all of the, to all of the finalists and all the winners, congratulations. And just again, coming back to uh, everyone that's entered the competition. Um, you know, again, when we started off, um, we were filmmakers that got rejected and we came together to do something about this for one another and we made a difference. And so we are a support system, I think. We've established that. So if we can help you again um, with contacts, please do let us know. Uh, this is what we do, is we do sound dance year round. And last but not least, just remember, all of those filmmakers that have been discovered at Slam Dance, Christopher Nolan, Lynn Shelton, Lena Dunham, the Russo brothers, and so on, they didn't become well-known overnight. The discussion that we had earlier on, I think sort of spoke to that, which was, which was, which was awesome. I encourage any writer to go back and listen to what, um, you know, what, 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 what Todd was speaking about with, with Tyler and Naima. I think it's great. But take heart in that. And if this is what you're meant to do as a writer, you do it. Uh, and these filmmakers that have come through slam dance are examples of really how, if you stick to what you really believe in, who you really are as a creator, uh, that you can be, you can find success, you can find a career. So uh, thanks, Todd, very much. And thanks, everyone. Uh, you've got the champagne. Yeah, I got it. I'm ready to go. I got to go help out with my kids Zoom class right after this. So uh, I'm just going to crush <laughs> this real quick. But thank you everyone for being here. Thank you, Naima and Tyler uh, for uh, listening to me talk and talking with me. Uh, thanks, uh, Peter and Albert. Thanks all of the winners, all of the nominees. And thank you to the staff here at the Arclight for letting me camp out for the last six months. Uh, congrats to everybody and uh, drink them if you got them. Oh, yeah. <laughs>